Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video, All In Crypto here. And today we are going to be talking about Stellar Lumens and we're going to be taking a purely technical look at Stellar. We're going to leave all the fundamentals to the wayside and I'm going to be telling you why potentially Stellar Lumens could be setting up for a pretty explosive rally to the upside, providing it adheres to a couple of things. Now, I know what you're thinking, not another Stellar Lumens parabolic video. There are many of them on YouTube, and often they are based on things like Jerome Powell personally holding Stellar Lumens um, and a whole load of um, nonsense, in my opinion. However, this is going to be a purely technical look at Stellar, and we're going to be showing you why there's a good chance history is going to repeat and actually that this pullback could be a blessing. You'll all be aware, certainly if you watch this channel regularly, that we actually caught the move for uh, XRP and an XLM that was largely driven by the SEC ruling. Um, and actually, I still hold spot of both. We did get out of the trade, however, um, and, and, and made out like bandits on that. Although, the opportunity may come again. I can see XLM being one of the big winners in the bull market because it has real world utility. And actually, crypto has largely been a very speculative space. And we are moving away from that with the likes of institutional adoption to more of a utility um, based market, I think. And XLM certainly has that. Without further ado, guys, let's drop in to uh, an XLM chart and let's just take a purely technical look at XLM first from a historical point of view, and then we'll break down the current structure and what it looks like. So this is the XLM chart. I want to go back a bit. This is a logarithmic chart. So if we take it off log, it becomes quite hard to, certainly if we're going to look at this um, initial breakout over here, uh, get a kind of uh, feel for things. So we're going to keep it on a logarithmic chart. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, XLM looks to be setting up in the exact same manner that it did previously before it saw some some pretty substantial gains. Now, what are we talking about in regards to history repeating? Well, let's go right the way back and let's start off from 2005 to 2017. Now, just because something's happened previously does not mean that it's gonna happen again. And this is where we're gonna take a more of a um, closer look at the current structure, the current cycle, where we are in regards to the market. Um, to really help us. And, and, and when you kind of add all the pieces to the puzzle together from a technical point of view, actually providing XLM comes back and holds the um, support level that was previous resistance like it's done previously, you could be setting up for some pretty explosive gains to the upside. So let's dive in, guys, and let's get into all that. This was, of course, the first kind of um, bull market that XLM um, experienced. And I don't think certainly if we take it from support, that XLM is going to do um, a similar kind of percentage in this market to the tune of 33,000%. Um, However, I do think it is going to do well. And the full disclaimer, I'm a holder of XLM. Um, and not always been the biggest fan of XRP and XLM. I've been a very early investor in both. However, in 2020, We've been investing in the cryptocurrency market since early 2017. We actually largely stopped DCAing and, and, and largely abandoned for other projects, XLM and XRP. And actually, that was the right decision as many other altcoins outperformed it, like Chainlink was a big one of mine uh, and many others, even Ethereum. Um, however, this bull market could be um, the one for these two tokens in particular. There's a lot of things adding up. Back to the historical view, you know, you can see here that XLM essentially initially broke out of its resistance that was then meet, met with a retest. And I'll go over to some other charts. I'll just find some random charts and show you that this is a, a, a pattern, a kind of, um, certainly in relation to where you are, this kind of base, if you will, you essentially just formed a range, which we are somewhat doing today, um, that of course you broke to the upside out of. Once you get that break, it's a shame we don't have the volume here because volume would have likely confirmed it. You then do get the retest before the real impulsion starts. But this is what we would call a stage two breakout. Let's move on to the um, the previous bull market. You can see a similar thing happens again. You enter your bear market, you come down and you start to put in a base-like structure. Um, this one is a little bit uglier than the prior, 
You know, you could even say you've got a bit of an inverse head and shoulders going on there, where this is your head, this is your right shoulder, this is your small left shoulder that you chop around. Ultimately, you do a very similar thing to what you did in the previous cycle. You come up, you break out of your resistance level, your base, which we call stage one into stage two. On volume, which is very important because it shows a um, degree of commitment is perhaps the right word to use. It shows a um, degree of confidence or it kind of confirms the move, if you will. If something happens on very low volume, it means that it's not taken a lot to move it. Okay, whereas if you see a big volume spike like this come in, what that will indicate is that there's conviction behind the move. And in this case, it was clearly um, the, the, the conviction was warranted. I know that it underperformed many other cryptos out there, but actually 500 and something percent, we're spoiled in crypto. We're so used to getting these, these kind of big gains that actually... Um, you know, it, 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 we, we, something like that we don't quite see as astonishing, but it is. That's a very good game to have made. And this is textbook sort of stage analysis um, that's playing out. So what do you do? You break it, then you come back for the retest, and you can see already using your Japanese candlestick analysis, these wicks are an indication that buyers are willing to step in here. And this uh, previous resistance has, that you've broken out of has now came back and met you as support you're also very maintained above your 30 weekly moving average guys if what i'm saying to you is making sense and you guys want to learn a little bit more about stage analysis please do consider becoming a patron it is something that we are championing um, as a method for investors a technical method for investors that is simple and effective um, and that will hopefully save you uh, a lot of money and potentially make you a lot of money uh, throughout your investment journey so you then come back for the retest and then the bull is on and you can see from this sort of stage two that was a 558 percent gain then of course we know what happened rates came in bloody bloody blah, blah, blah and now xlm has set up very similarly to what it did here i also didn't highlight this guys but this is very important actually and a very common trait and this is what we need to see moving forwards actually so i'm going to go ahead and highlight it you need to see your volume come in. So on the up move, you saw volume come back and confirm it. These are weekly candles, by the way. So moving forwards, we are now at a stage where we've assessed really since January, the first, uh, or sorry, the fifth, it's all public. We were largely out of the market here. We were shorting things like Luna, calling it very successfully. And we took a stance to get back into the market as we assessed a fundamental change was coming. And here um, on the 5th of January, uh, and since then, you know, Bitcoin and the stock market and other things we were bullish on have done quite well. All coins largely gone sideways. XLM has done quite well. Um, but you can see that this is potentially, and I'm going to show you something interesting. People think technical analysis doesn't work. And it's typically the people who have never um, really tried it or tried to understand it. You would say that this is a bit of a double bottom, a bit of a, a, a W bottom, whatever you want to call it. And actually, this would give you a projection. Now, funnily enough you met and sold off from isn't that interesting that's not a technical analysis is not a silver bullet it's not a um, crystal ball unfortunately and um, it will give you good areas you know it does work and um, but if you take this as this kind of double bottom here then you can see that actually the target for this played out. And the interesting thing here, and, and people often uh, say that, okay, well, you, your volume's not massive here, but the important thing is that it's um, to the orders of magnitude bigger than the previous volume that had occurred. So this has been a very low volume market. It still is a very low volume market. It's why, Bitcoin, why I think Bitcoin had the spill that it did. However, the volume here is to the order of magnitudes higher than the prior, almost to the order of two, okay? That is encouraging, and that's why we've actually came out and we've said, getting rid of this sort of short-term uh, target, this is just something interesting on XLM. Um, you, you know, this, this is quite confirming. You've also will know a declining volume on what could be a retest. Just like previously over here, and just like other examples we're about to show you, what have you got here? You've got a big wick showing that buyers are coming in. People are looking for a bargain. 
are they going to be right or are they going to be wrong? Well, it's largely going to depend on you holding this support. And this is where you look for that parabola, ladies and gentlemen. Adhering to it, also adhering to this 30 weekly moving average. And then you will very much set yourselves up for a similar move to what we've seen previously. And history may repeat. Of course, at what stage are we totally wrong on this? And you can all say all in crypto doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, if you come and you take out this low here, that would be a cause for concern for me. Going much below this sort of um, basing structure, this resistance would be a cause for concern for me. Um, and this is very timely because of where we're at. It's not just XLM that's done this. It's actually many stocks. You guys know that we uh, also play the stock market and apply things to it. Um, you know, if we look at Roku, for example, this did a very similar thing. I, this is why I don't understand. Bitcoin is, is a great example of this. Why people are as bearish as uh, perhaps they are because you're currently at support. Things currently look good on the breakout. They look okay on the retest. Um, but of course, time will tell if we are right on our thinking here that actually XLM could be setting up for some pretty significant upside or whether we are indeed um, wrong on it. So volume is confirming this. It's low volume generally around crypto full stop, just like it did here and just like it would have over here. Is history repeating, ladies and gentlemen? I want to know your comments in the comment section. Um, it's my opinion that XLM could be setting up for some um, decent upside if we pop on a volume by price before I love and leave you. From the bear market i doubt you'll have a lot of volume yes okay so you really run into your first block of volume it's very little volume here at all um which is very interesting but xlm could do very well in fact it could be one of the bigger winners in regards to the bull market that i now think we are entering we already assessed that the crypto revival is here let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section do you think that um TA is irrelevant. What do you think about TA? What do you think about what we've just shown you? Um, and, and, and let me know if you are excited for the future prospects of XLM. See you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.